Hello, on my desk here is an ANET A8. That's right, an absolute dinosaur of a 3D printer. In, in terms of modern 3D printing standards, this thing is wholly outdated. However, surprisingly, it has something in common with some very new and very expensive 3D printers, and that is the fact that unless you're in the room with your Mark I eyeballs trained on the print bed, you cannot see if this thing is making spaghetti or not. That's right, even something shiny and new like the Prusa XL doesn't have a webcam. You, you can remote monitor that printer. You can see the status of the print percentage wise and the temperatures. But again, you, you can't see if you have a spaghetti factory taking place on the print bed unless you're in the room with the printer. Now, we have some standard options for adding webcams to a 3D printer. What you do is, of course, you go out, you buy a Raspberry Pi, you buy an SD card for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can either print an enclosure or buy an enclosure. You buy a power supply and you pair that with a webcam that you print something to mount it to the printer somehow and there you go you have remote monitoring of your 3d printer however that can get expensive fast especially if you have multiple printers in today's video i'm going to show you how using an esp32 cam you can add webcam functionality that you can stream anywhere in your home network for under ten dollars to any 3d printer you own so let's get started so the ESP32 cam is quite a nice, compact, simple board, and it has all the features that you need to set up your own home live streaming webcam. And as you can see with the board here, we have the ESP32 controller. We have a built-in Wi-Fi antenna. You do have the option of adding an additional antenna to this if you wanna get more range out of it. And of course, we do have the webcam itself. Now you do have several different options of what ESP32 board you can buy. I just went on Amazon and I picked one up that comes with this little breakout board that connects to the pins on the ESP32. Now this add-on breakout board here uh, does give us a USB port, which is gonna come in real handy for several reasons. Namely, it is gonna allow us to program the ESP32 without having to get a separate USB FTDI programmer and wire them up individually every time we program one of these. And also, it's a USB micro port. So now, depending on the final setup, we can actually just power this via USB if we want, or I'm gonna show you an alternative option that just uses two wires. So we have the ESP32 cam itself here, and we're gonna have to start off by programming this. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is download the Arduino IDE, and I'll have links for everything in the video description for everything you're gonna need to go ahead and do this. I'll also link to a written guide that I found on how to do this if that's more your thing. So downloading the Arduino IDE is quite simple. Just download whatever version for whatever uh, operating system you are using. And after you extract that file, just fire up the Arduino IDE. And we're gonna have to do some setup first just to make it ready for programming an ESP32 device. After opening this up for the first time, you probably are gonna have a couple pop-ups to allow certain features and whatnot. Just let them do their thing. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is add ESP32 support here. So we're gonna go to File, go down to Preferences. Now you're gonna have to copy and paste the link here. Again, I'll have this in the video description. There we go. Then go to Tools, Board Manager, and we are gonna have to search for ESP32 and install this one here by Express If Systems. Go ahead, let that do its thing. So after you have that installed, you can go ahead and connect your ESP32 to USB, plug it into your computer, uh, now, normally I do find I have to restart uh, the Arduino IDE just to get the next stuff to show up after installing the ESP32 package. But we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna select our board, and it's this one here. Now this is a ESP32 cam, and you're gonna have to select uh, which one you have. Now I have an ESP32S, which is the same pinout as the AI Thinker ESP32 cam. Uh, so we're gonna go with that one. And we're gonna go here to File, Examples, and we're gonna find ESP32, find Camera, Camera Web Server. We're gonna select that. And this is gonna load up a pre-generated code to turn our ESP32 cam into a home web server. So we are gonna to have to change a few things here. Now for the exact model of ESP32 cam, again, I have the AI Tinker one. So we're gonna go down here, find that one. 
to find that one. Again, depending on which model of ESP32 you go with, you may have to select a different one. And then we're gonna put our SSID and our password here for your home network. So leave the quotation marks, uh, but put in your SSID and your password here. And then after you have your SSID and password, you can go ahead and hit upload. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my real Wi-Fi information on first before I do that. Now, the first thing it's gonna do is compile everything. And then after it compiles everything, hopefully you don't get any errors, it'll go ahead and upload everything to the ESP32. Make sure you do not disconnect it during this time or you risk corrupting your ESP32. So after the ESP32 is flashed, we do wanna see what is the actual IP address that we connected to. And you have a few different ways of doing this. If your home router has a web UI ability that you can go in and just see everything that's connected to it, you can get to it that way. But also you can get the IP address through the Arduino IDE itself. So we're gonna to go to tools, serial monitor. You're gonna to wanna to select uh, 115,200 bowed here. And then afterwards, you're gonna hit the reset button on that breakout board. There we go. And there is our IP address. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that, open up a web browser, paste that in, and there we go. This is our web server. So we have all the options right here, the settings for the camera on the left. We're gonna bump up that resolution to 800 by 600, and we're gonna hit start stream. And there is our webcam. Now, first off, it's probably not gonna look the greatest because I have a, uh, a light here blowing out the ISO in the background. But first things first, I'm gonna put a big pin in this. This is not a camera that you're gonna be using to make fancy time lapses for easy TikTok and internet points. This is simply a camera to remote monitor your print to make sure you are not making spaghetti. So again, the camera quality, as you bump up the resolutions, you can get some pretty high resolutions on this camera, uh, but you lose frame rate as you go up in resolution. And I think this artifacting that you're seeing here uh, is mostly due uh, to the electrical noise from all these USBs. So now I'm not gonna go through all these settings here and uh, tell you what they all are. You can look those all up yourself. I like leaving at 640 by 480. That's plenty enough resolution to see if my printer is making spaghetti. And also you do have control over the LED on it, which is actually surprisingly bright, but it causes more static in the image. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for now. And lastly, if you don't wanna have the options here, you can go ahead and just close them out. Now, one cool thing you can do with an IP webcam is if your printer is running, say, RepRap firmware, for example, in that web UI, you actually have the ability to import an IP webcam feed. So you can go ahead and use this with your printer running, say, a Duet 2 or Duet 3 uh, for remote monitoring, all within one nice, clean web UI. Or on your web browser, you could just have a bookmark file uh, with links to all the ESP32 cams, or you can get fancy, time into some home assistant system so you can monitor remotely, several of them at the same time. The choice is yours. This is a very modular system. You can set these up in multiple different ways. And now we're gonna go ahead and actually attach it to our printer. We're gonna to have to solve the first thing, which is how are we gonna power this? Now you do have several different options for powering the ESP32 cam. Since ours here came with this USB breakout board, you could just plug in a USB cable and power it via that. Uh, if the printer has an available USB port that outputs five volts, not all do, the ANET here doesn't, uh, you could just tap in there. Or if you have a wall wart that you can plug into, or if you have a power bar that has USB power delivery, there, there's several different ways that you can do this via USB, but what we're gonna do is actually not even use the breakout board. We only need this to program it, by the way. So if you plan on getting more ESP32s in the future, uh, what you can do is just buy one combo that comes with the board that you need to program it, and then just take it off and use that for others. And when you run them, you could just run them like this because we actually only need five volts in ground to power this, that's it. And this does not use a ton of power. You can pretty much pull five volts from anywhere on a controller board. Most controller boards have five volt and ground pins available to tap into either extra end stops, or in the case of the ANET here, I'm pulling five volts in ground directly from the extra um, ribbon cable connector for a LCD screen. This doesn't use a ton of power. You don't need a crazy MOSFET or anything like that. Also, if you're using a more modern controller board, uh, you can set fan voltages 
uh, using a jumper usually, 5, 12, and 24 volt. So if you really wanted to, you could get fancy, set that to five volts, and then you also have the ability to turn on and off your webcam if that's a feature you want. So for the ANET here, I've gone ahead and made up a little power cable here. I've tapped into five volts and ground off of two available pins on the controller. And we're just gonna go ahead and connect our ESP32 cam now. And I've gone ahead and printed a simple little case here uh, that I found on Thingiverse or printables, I can't remember where. It, it's a case, just Google ESP32 cam case or get fancy and design your own. And now we're gonna go ahead and plug this in. So again, we have five volt in ground. Make sure you plug it in to the right pins on your ESP32 cam. You don't wanna fry it now. And mine is luckily labeled on the front here. Always double check the wiring on your ESP32 cam or any microcontroller because sometimes uh, off-brand ones have different pinouts. You know, they might function the same. Um, they might switch some pins around on you. So we got five volts at the top and ground below it. So five volt in ground. Let's go ahead, power this on. There we go. Uh, there is no status LED on the ESP32 by itself, unfortunately. So we're gonna go ahead, put that in the case. There we go. And now we're gonna make sure this is actually working. Okay, we have our web server there. Start the stream. We'll put that up to 800 by 400. There we go. And as you can see, uh, pulling five volts from the printer, we no longer have those lines there. So that was probably electrical interference. And for mounting the camera to our printer, I'm just gonna go ahead and use some VHB tape because you know, it's an ANET A8, it deserves the best. That's good enough. Now, you can get ESP32 cams with different camera modules. This is just the standard one that comes with it. You can get widescreen cameras as well. Uh, the choice is yours. There's, sort, there's multiple different sources for ESP32 cams for multiple different vendors. So just find the one that works for you. This was just the cheapest one on Amazon that I could get next day. And that is it. Very simple to do, very easy to set up. You can do this in 10 minutes. It's under $10. It gets cheaper the more cameras you buy and it barely uses any power. So you can easily add this to pretty much your entire fleet of printers for a very, very, very reasonable price. If you have some sort of home assistant or server uh, on your home network, you can set up security software to automatically record all these. Uh, it, it, the sky is the limit. These are very, very modular type uh, controllers and cameras. So you can do a lot with this. This is an ESP32, it's programmable. You can have some real good fun with this uh, depending on what your end goal is. And in my case here, it was just a very, very simple webcam that I can add to a printer. In this case, this is gonna go on my Prusa uh, Mark 3.5. That's where I'm gonna probably end up mounting this permanently, uh, simply so I can monitor that printer uh, remotely. Because while it does have Prusa Connect, because it is a Prusa 3.5, it's got the new controller in it from the Prusa Mark IV, that only tells me percentage of print completion and temperatures. It doesn't tell me if I got a big old bowl of spaghetti on the bed. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Nice, quick, little, simple video on how to cheaply add a live stream webcam to pretty much any printer on your home network uh, for under $10 and a little bit of wire and some crimping or soldering. You can get really fancy with this. You can, you can do a lot of customization with this setup. I just showed you the simplest way to go about it. So again, I'll have links in the description uh, for all the information if you wanna do this yourself. And also while you're down there, don't forget to like that smash button, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. So take care and cheers.